Okay. Let's do some Python on hardware news later, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, this week uh, I'm going to talk about the PyCast that the team did with Tom's Hardware soon. Um, I thought this was kind of cool. This is a retro RPN calculator emulator using the PyPortal Titano mm. with CircuitPython. And um, the user interface is mostly done. You're going to be able to see it later in action. But I, I like people building their own calculators. I like it's little kind gradient of the, background. The it's cute. Yeah, it's the steps of building all of your own equipment. Um, topping your tree with a glowing, can you say this word? No. Rambi dodecahedron. Yeah, anyway, it's powered by CircuitPython. Okay. Um, we have some uh, guides on upgrading to the latest version of Raspberry Pi Buster. Sorry, from Buster to Bullseye. Um, we have some Lego plates that we've posted. Um, we have a call for Moo translations. Do check that out. Also, breaking news, there's a new version of Moo. It's available for code with dot Moo. Um, next week, the guest editor, I'm back. Um, the restraining order is over. No, I'm back. I'm back to doing the newsletter. Originally, it was... No, Anne's it, been doing it, yeah, but, Anne's been doing you a know, great job. great job. I promise you it's going to... So if, if you all know me, I, I did Hackaday, and I did Gadget, and I did uh, Magazine, a lot of online authoring. And if you like black and white photos, if you like that style, if you lowercase. like lowercase, if you like lowercase, if you like things a little edgy, a little artsy, a little gothy, you might like this newsletter that I'm doing. Yeah, the gothiest, the edgiest, the lowercaseiest. Yeah, and uh, if you want a preview of some of the stuff, you can go to my my personal Twitter, twittercom forward slash and you can um, look at drawings or photos. Parrots. And uh, you can say mean things to me and dunk on me. Um, or you can enjoy the art. Or you can enjoy the art. Look at birds. And look at birds and um, some medical tests and stuff like that. It's kind of fun. I got some x-rays. Uh, everything's fine. Um, so next up, uh, what I did want to show and talk about is keyboard. Oink, oink. Yeah. Tick, 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 tick. So keyboard is what we're calling a whole series of keyboard-based products from Adafruit. So we have a KB2040 and it's the Pro Micro form factor. And um, the kind folks at Tom's Hardware had Dan and Jeff and Scott on the show um, that they do. So Lady Ada, what, what's the big deal about this Pro Micro key, keyboard thing? Well, the RP2040... Um, Why is it a pig? Because it's a, it's a keyb, but we don't want to call it keyb because a lot of people could say keyb, so we want to call it keyboard, which is a, a little pig with a key as its nose. Um, the KB2040 is an RP2040 uh, based board, so it's using this extremely fast, very powerful chip um, from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, uh, their first microcontroller, and we put it into a pro micro form factor um, with 20 GPIO pins. Um, and we break out D plus and D minus as well. Um, so you can also, you know, use it for advanced USB configurations. And um, the idea here is that you can use this uh, design in existing macro pads and keyboards and upgrade it to use CircuitPython or MicroPython or Arduino. Um, and it's a big upgrade from the 32U4 that a lot of people use for keyboards. It, it runs out of memory very easily. Um, the 32U4 really only has, you know, 2K of RAM, 32K of flash. Whereas this chip has eight megabytes of flash and 256 or 264K of RAM. So a ton of memory um, and it's very fast, like 133 megahertz dual core. Okay. Um, right now there isn't QMK support, but I think it's coming. I think people are working on QMK support because so many people are building um, RP2040 based boards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also um, catch the whole thing. Uh, I yeah. condense this down to like 20 seconds, but it's about 30 minutes long and the entire crew's there and you'll be able to learn all about this and more. It's a deep dive, as they say in the biz. Oh, it's also a dollar less. I want to make the KB2040 oh, cheaper than the micro, Ooh. the pro micro, but it has all the stuff you want, USB-C okay. and- And then I'd say our big news for the week in the world of uh, CircuitPython and more is uh, PyLeap app is available in the App Store. Congratulations, Yay. Trevor and Antonio and Scott and Kenny and, and Marcos and everyone who's been working on this. We have a guide. We have a blog post. It's in the App Store, um, and I'll get to one little note uh, in a second. Um, 
when you when you go, you can open it up. You could see all of the screenshots. You can get the description and more. Will we have an Android version? Yes. Don't be mean about it. Every single time we have an Android version, and then only two people download the Android version of something, but leading all the way up until that, they're just mean. So stop doing that. It doesn't help the other Android users. So anyways, we're doing this one first. Expect an Android version down the road, but we also have other ways to get things on Bluetooth hardware. You can also use it, well, you can use from Android, from, from web browser. Yeah, from all sorts of things. Yeah. So we're going to make sure you're able to do everything all the time, everywhere, from multiple devices. That's kind of our jam. Um, but there's this weird thing that comes up every single time, no matter what app we do. It, we released an Android version, and someone said, do you have an Android version? I'm just like, are you kidding me? It's an Android version. And they're like, oh, yeah, sorry. I'm just used to asking that. Please don't do that. So um, that's everything in the world of Python on hardware. We deliver these to your inbox every single week. Get the newsletter that I'm going to be writing very soon. You can go to adafruitdaily.com. Search around. We're the only site that I know of at this point that respects Do Not Track. It's a separate website for newsletters. You can't get spam from us. You can try, but we're just not going to do it. And you go to Adafruit Daily, not adafruit.com, to get any of our newsletters. We wanted something completely separate so no one could ever say, y'all are spamming me. We just don't. Don't have those pop-ups. Don't do anything. And that's Python on Hardware News this week. That's what we're doing.